Welcome to our journey into the intricate and often misunderstood realm of cellular metabolism and cancer. Over the centuries, this dreaded disease has remained an enigma, with countless theories and researches attempting to decipher its origins. Traditionally, cancer has been viewed through the lens of genetic mutations, but today we're about to take a detour from this beaten path. We're diving deep into the metabolic mysteries of cancer, exploring a groundbreaking theory by Professor Thomas Seafried that challenges this conventional wisdom. His research focuses on the role of myocardial dysfunction, an aspect often overlooked in the world of cancer biology. So sit tight as we unravel the complex relationship between cellular metabolism, myocardia dysfunction, and the emergence of cancer cells. To find out more about Professor Seyfried's pioneering work in cancer research, check the description below for additional resources and references. Now let's embark on this enlightening journey to understand the metabolic origins of cancer. Ever pondered upon the metabolic origins of cancer cells? The complex world of cancer biology is a labyrinth of scientific discoveries and ongoing research. Traditionally, we've understood the root of cancer to lie in genetic mutations, but recent groundbreaking research by Professor Thomas Seyfried has challenged this conventional wisdom, adding a new layer to the cancer mystery. The focus of his research? Myocardia dysfunction, a condition previously overlooked in cancer biology. Professor Seyfried's work has unveiled a crucial link between this dysfunction and the emergence of cancer cells. Now let's take a step back and look at how a healthy cell works. Energy is the currency of life, and cells rely on a process called oxidative phosphorylation to produce this vital energy. But when myocardia, the powerhouse of cells, start to falter, things take a drastic turn. In the face of myocardia dysfunction, cells abandon their usual energy production method. Instead, they switch to a more primitive way of making energy resorting to glycolysis and the fermentation of sugar, even when oxygen is available. Why is this important? This metabolic switch gives cancer cells a survival advantage. It fuels their rapid growth and proliferation, allowing them to thrive in the face of adversity. Professor Seyfried's work has shown that only cells with compromised myocardia undergo this metabolic transformation. This highlights the pivotal role of myocardia dysfunction as the precursor to cancer development. Next time you hear the word cancer, remember, it's not just about genetic mutations. It's about a fundamental shift in cellular metabolism, a shift driven by myocardia dysfunction. Our understanding of cancer is changing, and with it, our approach to treatment and prevention. As we continue to delve into the complexities of this disease, it's clear that the key to unlocking the cancer mystery lies within our cells' metabolic processes. How does the food we consume daily have an impact on our risk of developing cancer? This question becomes increasingly pertinent with the ongoing advancements in research, shedding light on the complex connection between our diet and the development of cancer. The consumption of foods rife with processed sugars and refined carbohydrates can disrupt myocardial function, an essential factor in maintaining our cellular health. When the myocardia are compromised, cells may resort to an ancient survival mechanism, glycolysis and fermentation of sugar, for energy. This metabolic switch, while beneficial for the survival of these cells, provides a breeding ground for potential cancer cells. Imagine this. Each time we consume foods rich in processed sugars and refined carbohydrates, we could unknowingly be fueling this metabolic transformation, nurturing the very cells that could mutate into cancer cells. It's an unnerving thought, isn't it? Yet, there's a beacon of hope. Just as certain foods can disrupt metabolic health and promote cancer development, others can do the exact opposite. Adopting diets like the ketogenic or carnivore diet, rich in whole foods, healthy fats, and low in carbohydrates can help maintain myocardial function and thereby reduce the risk of cancer. The ketogenic diet, for instance, is characterized high fat, adequate protein, and very low carbohydrate intake, and has shown promise in cancer treatment. Similarly, the carnivore diet, focusing on meat and avoiding carbohydrates, can also be effective. Both these diets work by depriving cancer cells of their primary fuel source, glucose. Essentially, these diets starve the rogue cells while providing a sustainable energy alternative for healthy cells. It's quite an intriguing illustration of how diet can possibly be wielded as a weapon in our battle against cancer. However, it's crucial to remember that diet is just a single aspect of the bigger picture. Other variables such as lifestyle and genetic predispositions also contribute to cancer development. Nevertheless, understanding the profound influence of diet on cancer risk could revolutionize prevention and treatment strategies. 
Our dietary choices could be the deciding factor between feeding cancer or starving it. This powerful realization emphasizes the significance of diet in our pursuit to conquer cancer. So think twice before you reach out for that sugary treat next time. Remember, you wield the power to influence your cellular health with each morsel you consume. Let's delve into the role of intermittent fasting in the ketogenic and carnivore diet. Intermittent fasting is a dietary strategy that cycles between periods of eating and fasting. It's not about what foods to eat, but rather when to eat them. This pattern of eating could potentially enhance the metabolic switch from glucose to ketones as the primary energy source, a key aspect of the ketogenic and carnivore diets. When we fast, our body depletes its glucose reserves and starts breaking down stored fat into molecules called ketones, a super efficient fuel for our cells. This metabolic shift not only supports weight loss and improved metabolic health, but could also have profound implications for cancer prevention and treatment. How? Remember how we discussed that cancer cells thrive on glucose? Well, during fasting periods, we starve these rogue cells of their primary energy source, glucose, and glycolysis, their secondary energy source. This deprivation could potentially inhibit their growth and proliferation. Moreover, fasting might also enhance the body's ability to repair damaged DNA, a common trigger for cancerous transformation. Intermittent fasting, when combined with a ketogenic or carnivore diet, could be a powerful tool in our fight against cancer. But remember, it's not a one-size-fits-all solution. Always consult with a healthcare professional before making significant changes to your diet or lifestyle. It's also important to note that while promising, more research is needed to fully understand the potential of intermittent fasting in cancer prevention and treatment. Yet, the possibility that simply adjusting our eating patterns could help starve cancer cells and boost our overall health is a tantalizing prospect isn't it? Our battle against cancer continues and every new discovery brings us a step closer to victory. Is it possible that our lifestyle choices could be unwittingly setting the stage for cancer? The answer, quite startlingly, is yes. Our daily habits and behaviors can greatly influence our biological systems and by extension, our risk of developing cancer. Let us dig deeper into how this happens. One significant lifestyle factor is obesity, it's not merely about excess weight burdening our bodies, but it also disrupts normal metabolic function. The result? Elevated levels of oxidative stress and inflammation. These adverse conditions strain the myocardia, our heart muscles impairing their function. Myocardia dysfunction is a well-known catalyst for cancerous transformations, making obesity a significant risk. Let's not forget the role played by smoking and alcohol abuse. Both these habits introduce harmful substances into our bodies, capable of damaging the myocardia and affecting their proper functioning. Over time, the cumulative damage can trigger a metabolic shift, priming our bodies for the onset of cancer. Chronic inflammation and oxidative stress are two other conditions often linked to unhealthy lifestyle habits. Inflammation is our body's response to injury or infection. However, when persistently high, it can cause tissue damage and myocardia dysfunction. Oxidative stress arises from an imbalance between free radicals and antioxidants in our bodies. This can damage cells, including myocardia, setting the stage for the development of cancer. So, how do our lifestyle choices tie into all this? Unhealthy habits can tip the metabolic balance in favor of conditions that promote cancerous growth. It's a chilling realization, but there's a silver lining here. We can actively choose a healthier lifestyle to maintain metabolic balance, support our myocardia, and potentially decrease our chances of developing cancer. Our dietary choices, our physical activity, the habits we foster, each of these elements can either fortify or undermine our metabolic health. Striving to make healthier choices could aid in nourishing our bodies and protecting against the choices we make today could influence our susceptibility to cancer tomorrow. Take a moment to process this. Understanding the connection between lifestyle choices and cancer risk allows us to take proactive steps to protect our health and potentially alter the course of our lives. It's not merely about extending our lifespan, it's about leading healthier, fuller lives, free from the looming threat of cancer. How do our genes play into the cancer equation? This question has been the center of Professor Seyfried's innovative research. His studies have shed light on the complex interplay between genetics and metabolism in determining the likelihood of developing cancer. It has long been acknowledged that genetic mutations play a significant role in the onset of various types of cancer. 
These mutations can either be passed down through generations or can arise due to factors such as environmental influences or random errors during DNA replication. It's that these genetic changes can predispose someone to cancer, but Seyfried's work emphasizes that this is only a part of a more extensive narrative. Interestingly, it's the interaction between these genetic mutations and metabolic dysfunction that truly influences the progression of cancer. You could visualize it this way. Genetic mutations potentially prepare the pathway for cancer, but it's the metabolic dysfunction that sets things motion. So how does this intricate interaction work? When genetic mutations occur in cells with damaged myocardia, these cells are more likely to experience a metabolic switch, shifting from oxidative phosphorylation to glycolysis and fermentation. This particular switch gives these cells an upper hand in terms of survival, enabling them to multiply rapidly and form a tumor. Here's where it gets even more fascinating. If a cell possesses genetic mutations that predispose it to becoming cancerous, but that cell has a well-functioning myocardia and a healthy metabolism, it's less likely to transform into a cancerous cell. This discovery is truly groundbreaking in our comprehension of cancer. It implies that while we may not have control over our genetic makeup, we can positively impact our metabolic health and in doing so, potentially decrease our cancer risk. So, what are the implications of this for the future of cancer treatment and prevention? It necessitates a more comprehensive approach. We need to consider not only an individual's genetic makeup, but also take into account their metabolic health. We need to emphasize strategies that encourage a healthy metabolism, such as a balanced diet and regular physical activity. To put it succinctly, Seyfried's research urges us to broaden our understanding of cancer. By targeting both genetics and metabolism, we can potentially improve our effectiveness in the battle against cancer. It's not just in our genes, but also in our metabolism, where we might find the answers to cancer. This is the powerful message that Seyfried's research manifests, offering hope and inspiring us to rethink our approach to cancer. Are we on the brink of a revolution in our understanding of cancer? You may ask. The response, it seems, is a resounding affirmative. Traditionally, cancer has been viewed as a purely genetic ailment, a byproduct of DNA mutations causing cells to proliferate uncontrollably. This perspective, however, is being reevaluated. Revolutionary research, including the studies by renowned Professor Thomas Seyfried, is presenting cancer as much as a metabolic disorder as it is a genetic one. This alteration in perception is not merely theoretical, it proposes significant changes in how we handle cancer treatment. For years, the focus has been primarily on combating cancerous cells, on annihilating them or inhibiting their expansion. But if cancer is also a metabolic disorder, we have an entirely new pathway for therapy. Imagine, rather than directly targeting the cancer cells, we aim at their metabolism. We could disrupt their energy source, essentially the very thing that promotes their proliferation and sustenance. By perceiving cancer as a metabolic disorder, we unlock a vast array of potential treatments focusing on metabolic processes. One such method is the ketogenic diet. This diet, by limiting carbohydrate intake, constrains the supply of glucose, which is the primary sustenance for cancer cells. Simultaneously, it provides a different energy source for healthy cells, which can metabolize fats to create energy. This diet and other metabolic therapies like it provides a fresh, less invasive strategy to fight cancer. The implications of this paradigm shift extend beyond just treatment. It also presents an opportunity for cancer prevention. If we can decode the metabolic elements that predispose cells to becoming malignant, we could potentially intervene before the cancer even materializes. This shift in understanding could also result in earlier detection and diagnosis. By concentrating on metabolic indicators, we could potentially identify cancer before it becomes considerably problematic the possibilities do not end there. It also suggests a potential for future developments in cancer treatment. The focus on metabolic markers for early detection may lead to more effective and less invasive therapies, potentially reducing the need for more aggressive treatments. It might result in a more holistic approach to cancer treatment, focusing not just on the disease, but on the overall health of the patient. So, are we on the brink of a revolution in our understanding of cancer? It certainly appears to be the case. This shift could usher in a new age of treatment and prevention. The future of cancer treatment might lie not in targeting the cancerous cells themselves, but their metabolic processes. So, where do we go from here? This is not merely an inquiry, 
but an invitation to join us in an enlightening journey. A journey that meanders through the complex labyrinth of cancer biology, unearthing the delicate intricacies of its metabolic roots. This isn't the termination of our expedition, but rather a stirring commencement. An intriguing genesis, enticing us to delve into an enigmatic world that is as vast as it is profound. The research we've uncovered has painted a picture, albeit abstract, of the metabolic underpinning of this insidious disease. It's an intricate composition of data and hypotheses, a tapestry woven with countless threads of scientific studies and clinical trials. And yet, it's far from being a complete portrayal. It's a puzzle with many missing pieces, a narrative that's eager for further articulation. It propels us probe deeper, to look past the conventional wisdom and navigate the uncharted territories of cancer biology. Envision a future, not far off, where our comprehension of these metabolic roots results in groundbreaking therapies. A future where hope isn't just an abstract concept, but a tangible reality flickering brightly for those combating cancer. This isn't a lofty reverie lost in the cosmos, but a potential reality that we, collectively, can work relentlessly towards. The discourse, the metabolic origins of cancer, is a vibrant, ever-evolving one. It's a symphony played by a diverse orchestra of voices, each adding their unique note to the melody. Your voice is a vital part of this orchestra, a crucial contributor to this melody. It's a powerful tool that can shape the narrative, contribute to the discourse, and inspire change. As we continue to decipher the enigmas of cancer, we should bear in mind that every revelation, every innovation, is a stride towards that envisioned future. Each finding brings us one step closer to turning that distant dream into a palpable reality. Let's remember that every microscopic advancement in this field can potentially translate into a monumental leap in the fight against cancer. Together, we can strive towards a future where understanding the metabolic roots of cancer leads to innovative therapies and healing. Let's walk this path together, hand in hand, towards a future where cancer is no longer an overwhelming adversary, but an enemy we comprehend and can conquer. Now, the journey of understanding doesn't stop here. The world of cancer biology is complex and ever-evolving, and there's always more to learn. It's a field that is continually opening up new avenues for research and exploration. With advances in technology, our understanding of the intricate cellular processes that contribute to the development and progression of cancer is constantly being expanded. For those of you who are intrigued and wish to delve deeper into the metabolic origins of cancer, we've provided a wealth of references for further reading. This is a rich resource that has been curated to give you a comprehensive understanding of the subject. These references include not only the groundbreaking work of Professor Thomas Seyfried, but also countless other studies and papers that have contributed significantly to shaping our current understanding of cancer metabolism. These studies offer a broad perspective, looking not just at the metabolic origins, but also at the genetic and epigenetic factors that influence the development of cancer. They explore the role of metabolism at cellular level, illustrating how changes in metabolic pathways can lead to abnormal cell growth and proliferation. By exploring these materials, you'll gain a fuller picture of the intricate interplay between genetics, metabolism, and cancer development. You'll find that this is a field that is as fascinating as it is challenging, with new breakthroughs and discoveries being made every day. The importance of discussion and continued research in this field cannot be overstated. It is through these channels that new ideas are generated, hypotheses formed, and theories tested. As we continue to delve into the depths of our understanding, we're making progress in our battle against this pervasive disease. The more we understand, the better equipped we'll be to develop innovative therapies that can make a real difference in the lives of cancer patients. That is, after all, our ultimate goal, to find new and effective ways to treat cancer and to give hope to those who are facing this battle. Remember, every step we take in understanding cancer brings us one step closer to conquering it. Before we wrap up this journey, let's recap our exploration. We've immersed ourselves in the intriguing world of cancer metabolism, revealing the secrets of cancer cells. We've reflected on the importance of diet and lifestyle, observed the complex relationship of genetics and metabolism. This knowledge gives us a broader perspective, a shift in our understanding of cancer, and sets the stage for new treatments. Our exploration, however, is not over. We encourage you to keep discovering, studying, and contributing to this area of research. Remember, each step in understanding cancer brings us closer to defeating it. We trust this in-depth exploration has been enlightening, 
igniting your desire to understand this captivating subject further. So, until we meet again, remain healthy, stay safe, and stay informed. In the quest for knowledge, every question answered opens the door to new discoveries. Let's continue to untangle life's mysteries together. You for joining us on this journey.